Okay, what we're going to demonstrate here is a mechanism that allows us to use the accounts payable system for foreign currency transactions. Um, and in order to do this, we need to do a little setup. The first thing we need to do is set up an AP clearing account. So I've already set one up here, but let me demonstrate what that looks like under accounts here. I have a accounts payable account right here that I call APFRX Clearing. If you look at how this is set up, it's set up like any type of bank account, but the important thing here is you use the functional or local currency of the subsidiary, in this case it's US. Nothing special there, but it just becomes part of your bank accounts. The next thing you want to do is you need to enable the, the feature here, let me show you where this is, for custom transaction sets. Um, that's under Company Enable Features, it's over here in Suite Cloud, and you're going to activate over here Custom Transactions. Once you get that enabled, then you're going to set up a custom transaction. I've already created one Customizations, uh, List Records, and we go over here to Transactions Types. I've already created one over here that I'm calling Accounts Payable Clearing. Relatively straightforward. You give it a name, you give it the account that you're trying to reference, do not click credit because we're actually going to want this thing to hit debit. Uh, in this case here, I wanted to give it some document numbers and so forth. That's completely up to you if you want that to work. Now what's also important is, is when you take a look at the statuses, you need to have the posting flag on in order for it to uh, you know, basically post to the general ledger if you wanted any kind of uh, uh, workflow or different kinds of statuses you would use these mechanisms, but I'm trying to keep it simple for the example. Okay, so now with all that set up, the, the way you do this, if you have some bills that you're trying to pay using foreign currency, the way this is done, if the, if the, if the bills are denominated in local currency, say US dollars, but you're trying to use foreign currency to pay the bills, here's how you do it now. You would go over to Transactions, Payables, um, Pay Bills, and you choose your AP clearing account. Okay, That would bring up all the candidate bills that you're trying to pay. And in this case, I'm going to pay this bill, and I'm going to pay this bill over here. Okay, And you go through the normal process that you would uh, end up using to pay. And here, you're actually de determining that you're going to pay 900 and 150 US dollars, Okay, even though you're going to use foreign currency for that. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit save on that. All right, let that go started. It's a typical kind of process that you go through to, to uh, pay bills and so forth. And then what I want to illustrate at this point in time is that the clearing account, if we go over to list accounting accounts, if we take a look at the clearing account right here, it's going to now have a balance of 1050, right? And that's US dollars. Now, the goal of the clearing account is always to be zero. So that's how you know you're in control. So we're halfway through it. So now, what you've indicated is, is that you've used the clearing account to pay this. Now we need to actually create the custom transaction to record the foreign currency that was used to satisfy these payments. So what you're going to do is you go over to Customizations, we're going to go to transaction types again. You can put this on a different menu, of course, but let's just go new transaction. Okay. And we're going to change the currency. In this case, we're going to be using Bitcoin to pay that as foreign currency, right? And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to indicate the two, uh, two players that we were um, paying. The first one was Superior ISP. And we're going to say here that we're using the Bitcoin account, like your other bank account that you're using to actually pay out the foreign currency. And here I'm going to put in the amount of foreign currency that I used. It's right there. Okay. And I'm going to indicate the, you know, just some memo paid with foreign currency. It's up to you, whatever you want to put. Okay. AMC steal. Okay, same account, 1010, right here, right, paid with um, F 
FRX. Now, the key to understanding this is that this exchange right here uh, is really needs to be derivative. It needs to be derivative in the sense that you use the number of exchange rate, use them to indicate the amount of foreign currency that was used to satisfy those USD liabilities, right? So this exchange rate is what comes up default in NetSuite based on the daily exchange rate. But in many respects, the by changing the exchange rate to fit the number of currency units that you use to satisfy it is perfectly acceptable, at least in my mind, because you've effectively agreed with your uh, vendor to have them accept that foreign currency in order to satisfy a, a, say, a local USD obligation, right? So change that exchange rate, whatever that would be, and I'm, I'm making the assumption that you would already have that information available to you because you, you, know, you did it ahead of time. So you change the exchange rate. I'm not going to change it here, but that's what you would do. I'm going to hit Save. I look at this transaction here, and I look at the GL impact, right? I can see that my amounts are correct, right? And uh, as indicated, keep that simple. And now I can go over to the actual listing of the account and take a look and see if I'm under control for it to be a zero dollar amount, meaning it should be always at zero if I'm doing my practice right. And indeed, if you take a look here, I've got 1050 and so forth, and it all nets out down to zero, and we're in good shape. 